Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English size them, and then make funny noises. I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and former Dread Pirate, Nicholas Tyson. Today, we have our third episode of Kabashima and Oda's Shochan Adventures. In our last episode, Squirrel and Sho took their very first business trip to Osaka, and along the way, found themselves getting drunk on pickles, as it turned out. <laughs> you can check out that episode on this channel, but for today, we have... Risu no Haha, Squirrel's Mom. Now, okay, here we have an object lesson in why Japanese is a really freaking annoying language to read. Okay, so for those of you who may have studied a little bit of Japanese, you're probably tempted to read this as haha, mother, no suri. So, <laughs> and even though Squirrel's mom is, as we will discover, a little rough around the edges, she's not, in fact, a pickpocket. Um, and that's because you have to read this from right to left, not from left to right. So it does, in fact, say, Risu no haha. Um, it's just one of those things about um, early modern Japanese orthography. It can be written all sorts of bizarre ways. And so, yeah, <laughs> sometimes you have to go with what makes the most sense. Although in this case, technically, you could read it either way and it would make sense. So it's a bit odd. Anyway, let's get into today's episode. One morning, Sho woke up to find his friend Squirrel nervously moping about. Hey there, Squirrel. What's got you in such a bad mood? Just worried. Sho was curious what might have happened, and when he asked, it turned out Squirrel had had an ominous dream. What's the matter? I had such a weird dream. Squirrel dreamed his mother was falling from high up in a tree, but before he could see whether she was okay, he woke up. She was falling from so high up. Oh no. And while they were puzzling out between them what might have happened, a telegram arrived at the front door. Who is that? Sho picked up the telegram to see who had sent it and saw it was a message from Squirrel's family that read, Hurry home. It's from your family! Eh? Squirrel was now so worried that, without skipping a beat, he snatched the message and prepared for an immediate departure. Something's not right! Squirrel said his goodbyes to Sho and set off for home. I'm going now, Sho. Good luck, and take care of yourself. Squirrel had decided to take a taxi cab. Cab's here. Sho called out to Squirrel just as his friend was getting in the car. Squirrel, hold on. Yeah? Watch up. Sho wanted to accompany his friend. So, he got himself ready to go as well. I'm coming with you. Oh, man, thanks. As they hurried away in that boxy car... Got everything? I think so. The car zoomed away at such great speed, you might easily mistake it for an ambulance. <laughs> Then, when the taxi found itself deep in the hollows of the nearby hills... Wait a minute! Where exactly are we going? The driver turned his head to look back and flipped a switch lying at his side. And when he did, a foul-smelling gas began to fill the car. <laughs> Not that kind of gas. <clears throat> Phew, it stinks in here! <coughs> and only moments later, Squirrel and Sho lost consciousness. Later, when they opened their eyes, they found themselves bound tightly with ropes. This isn't good! This is really bad, Sho! 
and as they spoke, a terrifying witch came to drag them away. <laughs> Keep quiet, you two! <laughs> Again, production values. <laughs> Keep quiet, you two! Show and Squirrel were in real danger. The witch was going to kill them, and in broad daylight. Hey, what's the big idea? <laughs> you two are such a nuisance. Oh, looks like the suddenness of that telegram, and then the cab showing up was no mere coincidence. The witch drew them ever closer to a pitch black tower that loomed high above them in the sky. This is where we'll put your bones. <laughs> She dragged them up a long, winding spiral staircase. And at the top, there was a sealed iron door. The witch opened the door, shoved her prisoners through, and shut it behind them. And this is where you'll meet your doom! <laughs> and by the way, the, that's where the, the witch disappears. She doesn't, she doesn't come back, so... There's that. <laughs> there, at the top of the tower, their bones would be picked clean and scattered about the ground. We're in a real pickle show, Chan. Eh? Oh. Uh. <laughs> show turned his back so that Squirrel could nibble through the rope and so that, in turn, he might untie his friend. Hey, Squirrel, can you manage this rope for me? That's when, suddenly, the sky grew black, and the pair were shocked to see you loomed above them. Oh, no! Eek! A massive flock of vultures took aim and dove toward the tower. Eagles? No! Vultures! All right. <laughs> so, I'm going to stop here for a second to explain how this whole eagles vultures thing works. Um, so, show literally says, Oshida, kondoru da! So, eagles, vultures. <laughs> um, it's literally the word, um, so, washi is literally the word eat for eagle. Um, but it's worth noting that in Japanese, uh, washi is used in combination with a lot of other words to basically refer to types of vultures and various other carrion birds. So, it, there's a sort of a linguistic slippage here. So, it's, it's washi, so it's like eagles, oh no, that's actually these other combo eagles. And so when he says they're kondoru, which is the word most commonly used for um, old world vultures, um, but also condors, and because in case you didn't know, condors actually are also carrion birds. They are technically vultures as well. And so uh, the translation is going to be a little bit slippery here. So if I go back and forth between um, condor and vulture, it's to sort of allude to that slippage. Anyway. Seeing them, Squirrel and Sho were in a panic and had to hide themselves underneath the bodies lying on the ground. Hurry! Get out of here! Now! But it wasn't long before the buzzards had descended and were tearing at the flesh of the bodies before, before them. They used their sharp eyes to hunt for Squirrel and Sho. With an eerie grace, the vultures spread wide their wings. Then someone let out a horrific scream, and our companions clambered out to see where it was coming from. They got someone! Oh, Show Chan! One vulture saw the pair emerge from their hiding place and complained Wait, you are gonna keep these two all for yourself! His fellow vulture vociferously denied the deceit, and so a terrible fight broke out. The Von Vulture cried out, and its torn feathers were flying about into the air. <coughs> and as evening fell, that one injured vulture removed itself from the others to take stock of its wounds. Sho took a deep breath and thought long and hard about that injured vulture's suffering. 
Okay, so, oh, jeez. <laughs> Another very Japanese-specific thing here. So, what I translated here as suffering is actually aware. And so, it's more like show thought long and hard about sort of the the pathos of the whole situation or how like how pathetic the whole situation was. Anyway, I didn't have an, an easy way to render this, so that's what I came up with. Sorry about that. Thank God! That bird shaved us! But for all that, it's so much worse for the wear. Seeing the pair meant it no ill will, the vulture crouched back down to recover. Hey there, Sho here's a really good guy. I mean, I sure like him. Hey, why don't you let us help you with your injuries? The condor, uh, not vulture, condor, <laughs> tears flowing from its eyes, apologized from the bottom of its heart. I'm so ashamed of what I've done. The vulture begged Sho to be friends. I'm, I'm not so bad. And Sho was a good-hearted lad and knew they had nothing to fear. He relayed to the bird everything that had transpired so far. That's how they tricked us. And Sho, as you can imagine, I'm really worried about my family. The condor offered to take them to Squirrel's family. You mean, you mean I can come with you? If you don't mind. The pair tended to the vulture's wounds and climbed onto its massive back. Hop on! They flew up into the clear blue sky, soaring ever higher and higher. And at the place where they landed, they saw before them a familiar sight. This is the forest where I first met you, Squirrel! The pair paid their respects to the condor and headed back to where Squirrel's family were waiting for them. Say, isn't that your family over there? Oh man, it's been over a year and a half since I left them. Squirrel's mother and brother were so happy to see him, they leapt for joy. Hey there, big bro! Oh, Squirrel, my dear, dear boy! Yeah, by the way, Squirrel's mom calls him Squirrel. I mean, they're all squirrels, but she calls him Squirrel. She calls him Risu. Yeah, you figure that out. <clears throat> when Squirrel's mother heard what was in the telegram, her tail hairs stood right on end. What? You thought that telegram was from me? She raised her voice at her son and reminded Squirrel that his apprenticeship to show mattered more than anything else. And yes, it's literally called an apprenticeship. It's super weird. What? You think your ma got all mobbed up somehow? Squirrel's ma... Oh, yeah, okay, so let's go back to that. So yeah, she... she li there's this reference to Yakuza here, and I should note that... um. One of the reasons why I'm using these uh, uh, vaguely Staten Islandy slash Brooklyn slash Queensy accents is because this—they're all. Some, in fact, Squirrel's mom in particular is speaking very clear, like Osaka Ben. So this is like clearly marked as other than sort of regular Japanese. <clears throat> Squirrel's mom vowed never to try and get in touch with her son ever again, and so, sighing deeply, she sent her boy off on his next adventure. Even if I'm lying on my deathbed, I will never, ever, ever ask you to come home. As if waking from a deep sleep, Squirrel lifted his head, and his mother, with pointed words, added, Shou-chan is your number one priority. Through her tears, Squirrel's mom told him to run along now, which only served to make Sho burst into tears himself. Oh, Squirrel! Oh, Squirrel! Your mom's a real gal! I know what I gotta do, Ma. Sho and I gotta have the best adventures together. And scene. So, a little bit of a... an unusual episode. Well, not really that unusual episode, but there are some peculiarities today. Um, if you like this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Um, I have a Patreon now, so if you want to support this work, you can go to www.patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga. That's all one word. Um, I'd really appreciate your support, but, you know, if you can't afford it, that's cool, too. These are, you know, free to everyone, and it's all about sort of a public, I don't know, support model. Anyway, um, that's all for today, and so be sure to take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.